Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at ZBrush Core Mini 2021. This is the most recent release from the folks at Dixiologic and of course this update does have a couple of cool things in terms of vector displacement, how you can actually sculpt and a couple of things right here that deals with the turntable animation and how you can now render and export your stuff. This is pretty cool. So to get started, you need to go over to the link in the description or simply go over to zbrushcore.com forward slash mini to get started. And it brings you right over here where you can download and you can even check out some of the cool features that this actually stands to offer. So who really needs the ZBrush Core Mini? Those who are thinking about getting into sculpting and for those who want to try out what ZBrush looks like, the tool that you should take a look at. Now, if you've used the tool called Sculptrace Pro before, there's a much more advanced version of that and it looks pretty awesome. So getting started, if you download the ZBrush Core Mini, this is what the UI looks like. And for a couple of uh, minutes, I've been playing with it and you know, I just went ahead to sculpt this character right here. It's just a simple head, right? And just playing around, exploring all the cool features that you have right now. And we will go in and talk about some of those. So getting started, the very first one which you notice within the UI is the turntable. So there is now a turntable button which simply allows you to take a look at your model and also create turntables that you can now export. So previously ZBrush Core Mini users were only able to export images. But right now, once you've done sculpting, you can just simply click on the turntable icon and it will spin the model around. And finally, it's gonna pop up a save movie dialog, which would help you save your turntable as a movie file. And in this case, we're just simply going to go ahead and click on save and you can see it renders it out and you can now export it. The only downside here is contrary to the original ZBrush, which you can extend the size and you can play with the camera rotation, play with setting things in terms of how you would want your model to behave when a turntable is happening, those features and all those options are not here. Despite that, just simply exporting the turntable looks pretty sick. Now, another new feature which you would notice is the occlusion. So right now there is an inclusion of the ambient occlusion that is already in ZBrush. So you can see that here. So if we go in and increase the intensity, you can see what we have. So we have this beautiful real-time ambient occlusion system that has now been implemented into ZBrush Comedy. So this would be very useful for those who like to sculpt things. So at this point, if you like to sculpt things, just simply make sure that you have symmetry turned on and you can go in and you can sculpt. So at this point, we can just go in, sculpt in a little bit of stuff right there and you have all of the things that you want to work with. So this is pretty cool and I think it's just definitely going to make how your work looks and your presentation look a bit more better than the default way that this used to look before. Every other thing in terms of shortcut is exactly the same. If you press S on your keyboard, you can play with the size of your brush. If you press U on the keyboard, you can play with the intensity, which is right here. And uh, if you're also thinking about looking at the wireframe, you can tap Shift and F on your keyboard and you can take a look at the wireframe right here. So I'm also gonna go ahead and show you guys that. So this is your polyframe, which is known as wireframe. So you can click right here and you can see your polyframe and you can also turn off your line so you can see what your model looks like. And then you can turn off the fill and probably just say you wanna turn on the line right here and you can see what you have. In terms of uh, you know creating polygroups, that is actually something that you cannot really do in a simple sense, okay? So you can't really do things like making polygroups. You cannot mask. If you hold down control on your keyboard, you cannot mask. It simply just zooms in and out. And other things that you can't do here is you can't really play with some other tiny little things. Like when you hold down shift and control on your keyboard, probably you want to use some line gesture tools. Those line gesture tools are not here. Now there is also a vector displacement system that is also implemented. And I'm just simply going to go ahead and show you guys how that works. So how this works is so, so cool. If you look down here, you'll notice that we have four new brushes that you can play with. So there's now the chisel 3D, chisel 3D for characters, there's a simple chisel 3D for shapes, and then we have the chisel 3D organic. So if we go in and select the simple chisel 3D, we can start making some stuff. So right here, you can see where the direction of our model is. So we are just simply looking forward and I can click here, turn off that symmetry, and I can come over here and drag to add a simple nose and this is how you can add a nose that nose looks a bit too much so we can get something even smaller let's make sure that we're looking at this and yep we can add a little nose like that that looks cool and we can even go in and add a couple of eyes or we can go in and say maybe we would like to have 
eyes right here make sure we have symmetry and we can add those eyes around here and we can see what we have all right so we kind of messed up with the nose and we can also do the same thing for the ears so we can do the same thing for the ears right here and i think we should do that from this part and you can see how we have this large ears happening you can also choose to play with some other things so let's also go in and just simply move all right so let's just move this part around and position this one right here and you already can start seeing how some uh, things can come together so we can do something like that and we can actually use things like our clay builder brush that is already existing here start defining some parts of the character so we can define parts like that we can also use that move tool to move things in place so despite this you also have access to some more you know chisel tools that exist right here so you can go over to the chisel creature and with the chisel creature you can see some uh, nice looking stuff that you can add up so let's say you want to add some horns so i think we should add a couple of horns to this character so we can go in and we can add a horn right here that doesn't look so cool so maybe we should try out uh, maybe try out some small horns all right so we can add some small horns and one thing which i've come to notice is the size of your brush all right it determines how much of our details you'll be getting because this is simply using the sculptris pro feature which is actually a dynamic tessellation system these uh sort of influences how your chisel works so if i increase the chisel brushes and i click and drag i want you guys to see what we're getting we're losing detail if i reduce that and then we click and drag i want you guys to notice that we're having way more detail so just in case you're thinking about this so this is how you go about it so we can do that you can also use the chisel brush for your shapes all right so you can also use that and there's a couple of shapes here that you can explore with and if you also go over to your chisel brush for dynamic stuff there's also some very tiny little things that you can also explore with this so you can see that as well and we can just increase our brush size actually and we can have that there you know just clean that up a bit hold down shift to smooth things out and we can go over to where we have our clay build up brush and we can start layering those lips all right and uh, start having some things like that happening there and this way you can pretty much start sculpting right here if you're thinking about you know shading coloring those very frivolous features that you will not be able to get with this and i think this is just for basic starters those who would like to start sculpting in zbrush and maybe you don't want to spend so much you want to test out how zbrush gets to work right now you'll be able to have 12 different key brushes that you can work with and i think in most cases these initial brushes which is like two four six eight these eight brushes would get you from point a to point b except for those things that are currently not available you might be able to play with this stripped down version of zbrush to create some interesting and impressive stuff so this is more like it and this is exactly uh, the set of tools i just saved this right on top of the other model so this is more like it and this is how you can play with uh this set of tools to create some things for yourself and for anyone who would like to test this out maybe you want to see it you want to play with it you want to play with all of this tiny stuff and potentially export your model as both image or as a 3d file which you can use in any other 3d app then you can do that with the zbrush core mini by clicking on this button right here export as obj or you can click right here and export this as a simple image file and this is more like it for anyone who would like to take a look at this probably you are sort of interested in creating some pretty cool masterpiece with this so then this is something that you should consider taking a look at tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section links to this is going to be in the description so just in case you want to read more about it you want to read more about the previous carpentry pro which is the you know the system that is being used right now to do that dynamic tessellation link to it is going to be in the description so do well to check it out tell me what you guys think about this one and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and like see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace